Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, we are going to start a long-term project today. Normally, I get all sorts of comments, and some of them come back again and again. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you might have commented that my near carbon orbit is pretty full of stuff. So I get a lot of comments that I should perhaps clean that up. Secondly, I get a lot of requests to actually build my own space station. So, the idea came to me to do a completely reusable space program, whereby everything that we launch has to either stay in space or come back down. Furthermore, we want to keep everything in space in any controlled manner. We don't want to have spent stages sitting up there. We want to have everything in a single structure which has functionality. Now, initially we're going to build a space station around Corbin. Then, once we think we've got that set up, we will set out for the moon, and we will put a station in orbit around the moon. The idea being that instead of simulating a bunch of bold pioneers heading off to locations unknown and undiscovered, we're going to instead imagine that space travel is a common everyday thing, and to travel to the moon, what you do is you get the space bus to the space station in orbit. Then you get the shuttle which takes you to the moon. And then in moon you transfer over to a landing vehicle so you can get onto the surface and do your important research or just go sightseeing because traveling to the moon should be an everyday event. Now this time we are launching the core of the space station. We have astronauts on board this. The section underneath, that is my main booster. I'm going to reuse this design in many ways. Now, there's a bunch of different ways we can do it, and in this particular one, we are actually jettisoning those external engines, but they all have parachutes and struts so that they don't fall apart when uh, they re-enter the atmosphere. They will land in the ocean to the east of Kerbal Space Center, where I imagine the Kerbal Navy will be waiting to pick them up and bring them back to base. Now, depending on the payload, it's entirely possible that we do not need to jettison these. This is just one option to get ourselves a little more Delta V and get us higher into space. Now, this space station core just is focused on crew accommodation. It doesn't really have enough power to do very much. It only has a few docking ports. We are going to be extending this thing until it is large enough to support the kind of infrastructure we need for an everyday space program. So anyway, we are just adjusting its orbit. Uh, I have a mechanical jab. I could just hit the circularize orbit, but it's a pretty easy operation. I'm just adjusting things around and try to get the apoaps and the periaps within a few hundred meters of each other and then once we're there we're going to stick it in a north-south orientation so that the docking ports on both ends are aligned with the the normal and anti-normal directions and from there we'll just leave it in its position that is the or the station it is deployed it has a small amount of uh, battery power and solar cells it does have maneuvering you know rcs but it's not going to re return to Kerbin safely. Those guys are now reliant on the space program following up. Now we're going to return the launch vehicle to the landing site, or to the, the Kerbal Space Center. And the idea is, what we have to do is, is put our... We're, we're going to basically time accelerate and put the, the periaps somewhere over the ocean to the, the east of Kerbal Space Center. If you get the right altitude, and this one seems good. I, I had a, a few different trials on this, but if you put about 31, 32 kilometers over that other continent, then uh, you will come down pretty close to the, the Kerbal Space Center. The, I, I think I need to come up with a, a diagram or whatever. It obviously depends what orbit you're coming from. Anyway... The crew gets uh, one last look at uh, the ship that launched them here, speeding off into the distance. It's going to be the last uh, thing they see for quite a, f a while, because we have to get everything else there. Now just time accelerate over the surface We as we watch this thing and see how good my uh, guess has been. Again, we could have we could have used mechanical jeb if we had it fitted. It would have at least given us uh, an estimate of the touchdown location. That would certainly help a whole lot if you are working in terms of, of a reusable space program. The main thing is you want to kind of clear these mountains. You don't want to land right on top of them. But that is a pretty good estimate there. We're going to come down, well, maybe less than a kilometer from the space center. Now, 
what I've got here is I haven't deployed all my parachutes, so I'm going to have to go in and manually deploy them one by one for some reason. So that's going to click around. We're trying to do this before we get to the 500 feet deployment altitude. Furthermore, we want to kill vertical velocity a little because we've all seen that sometimes these large spacecraft have a tendency to fall apart if the chutes deploy all at once. Uh, so we're going to use what little fuel we have left to kind of kill the vertical velocity and make sure that everything touches down. Also be aware there's no landing gear on this, so we want to use the engine a little more when we come down to actually touch the ground to make sure that we hit the ground going as slowly as possible so as not to break the spacecraft apart on touchdown. Anyway, the gods are smiling on me and I have a good deployment. Now we're just going to bring this down slowly to touchdown. I mean, to be fair to the developers, they've modified the parameters of the parachutes in the most recent versions of the game and they're far less likely to tear apart large composite spacecraft. Now I just have to worry about the fact that uh, there's no landing gear on this thing, so I have to touch down extra, extra carefully just to make sure it doesn't uh, not only break, but fall over. And there we are. Excellent. So now it's time for the next part. Uh, part two, I would generally say is, uh, well, it seems to be a good idea to put up a power supply next. So we're going to put up the solar power array. Uh, that will basically power everything else that we need, need to attach to the station. And you see that this one is launching without launch clamps. It is sitting on the pad using its landing legs and of course firing up the jet engines first. We're actually using, a lot of people like to use the turbo jets. I'm using the regular ones because they actually give me a bit more thrust early on. There's also a problem with them not actually being able to carry the whole weight of the spacecraft. So you see me turning on and off the main rocket engine and trying to maintain about 100 meters per second vertical just by turning this thing on and off bit by bit. Then we'll proceed up and around 15 kilometers, that's when we'll start uh, turning on the main engines and actually aiming to go to orbit. And about 19 kilometers, that's when the engines cut out, and there they go there. Uh, if you're not fast on shutting down the engines, you can end up getting turned off course, but generally it's quite manageable. Anyway, it looks like, a, looks like I kind of launched a little late. I, I figured out that for a launch to a 100 kilometer orbit, uh, 450 kilometers seems to be a good target distance. But anyway, that's fine. We can get this thing into orbit. And then we'll adjust, we'll adjust the final rendezvous. So what I'm doing now is I'm refueling the upper stage and then we're going to detach it. It's going to fly the rest of the distance on its own and I'm going to leave the launch stage essentially in a parking orbit until we're ready to return it. It can return, you know, when it turns around the other side of the planet, but the actual, we'll just wait until we've docked this whole thing. So, where are we? Yes, we've used about one quarter of our fuel here, and we're just going to fly around. This one I made a big mistake with. I put far too many RCS units on it, and because... Well, if you remember that, that bug where I demonstrated that putting uh, RCS engines near the center of mass caused very high levels of thrust, that uh, was actually making things more controllable. The way they, they just removed the feature completely rather than perhaps fixing it. So uh, it's actually easier to dock in Kerbal Space Program 0.181 than it is in 0.1812, whatever. Anyway, so this is what you're going to see here is me spinning around like a complete lunatic. Uh, I have a terrible time trying to dock this thing because it is far too uh, agile. And in fact, I also completely forget to turn on fine controls. And I, <laughs> before anybody tells me, yes, I completely forgot to turn on fine controls. So uh, I hope you don't get seasick, but just watch this thing as I do finally get, get it in. Get it into location and thinking, oh, that's looking pretty good. And then as I come in, oh, in the wrong place. And then everything just starts going nutty. <laughs> like... If you turn on the, R the the SAS on this, it actually just spins around like something crazy. Uh, also note that I bumped the target station, so therefore it rotated off center. <laughs> yeah, uh, having too much RCS can be bad as well. 
Uh, I seriously hope that the RCS system gets a proper, you know, some proper love in point one nine because it it has essentially made docking mode useless because uh, you know RCS doesn't self balance in any intelligent way. Uh, it may be a small feature, but I think it will help. Certainly, it'll help people that are, you know, uh, not so good at the game. And it'll make them easier for them to dock. But look, finally we get close enough. Thank God for that magnetic force. Otherwise, I was never going to get that docked. There we are. So we've got part two of our space station in orbit. Let's bring out those solar panels. We have uh, RTGs on there, just in case we need some extra power at night. But, uh... That should work pretty well. Uh, I, I I originally had a far more complicated station designed, which had lights and stuff like that, but it starts to hit serious frame rate issues, and I ended up stripping off all the stuff which I didn't deem relevant. Anyway, time to return our spacecraft to the surface. So we're just switching to it, and yeah, there's us burning our engine, bringing the periaps down to about 30 kilometers again over the ocean near the near the space center it's uh, hard to see here but it is in fact uh, to the to the east of the space center there uh, god it is so dark but you just a bit of tweaking oh maybe a little too low there actually yeah because uh, the closer in you get to the to the space center the the deeper down you have to go to make sure you end up coming in over it. And, uh, you know, some some cases, some cases I had to retry that descent several times to get them close. This one was the first take, and I am so happy because it gets pretty darn close on its own. Also, what I'm doing is I'm transferring the remaining liquid fuel into two of the jet engines. Those will, and I'll enable those jet engines, those will act as the brakes for the parachute deployment. We have to make sure we only turn on those. We don't want any of the other ones. And we have to make sure we turn off the main engine. Otherwise, it will take away all my fuel. And I will be sad because I will have no fuel for my jet engines. But now let us fly across the surface at 2.5 kilometers per second. Skimming through the atmosphere. Uh, again, this may be the last chance I may be able to do this. Because perhaps they'll add re-entry heating at some point And these things will not be able to survive the re-entry. But uh, until then, this whole uh, reusable space program concept... Uh, that, oh, wow, yeah, that was pretty good. I didn't realize just how good it was, but... Yeah, I uh, that was totally my first guess. <laughs> the other one, it was my second guess. There we go, deploying the parachutes. And using the engines just a little to kill that gear out and this will be a whole lot easier because the gear is here it, we can hit the ground going a little faster which is fine because we actually have a bit more mass this time but yeah now we uh, are coming down we fire up the engines and then i encounter a weird problem where my throttle gets stuck and won't go higher in fact all of my controls seem to be locked out at this point so i figured it might be something to do with the probe when i transferred electric charge to see but that didn't give me any control and then I cut my power and I, I pressed X and that cut my engine power so that responded and left me basically floating down on the parachutes alone. I thought I would be able to use those to um, help you know, cushion my impact a little but turned out that I didn't get to do that so I'm just going to float down to the surface and hope that the landing gear can survive the load. The spacecraft may be unmanned, but it is very expensive, and we are trying to make sure that we do not break anything in this bold endeavor. But there we go, touched down perfectly, and that is one spacecraft that is 100% reusable. And in future parts, we will be transferring more and more material to the station and eventually heading out towards the moon. But until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.